let's move on to lists. I've covered a little bit about Navigator, Push, and Pop. And what you've noticed as we've been making this is on the home screen, I have this app bar and I've got this floating action button and that's great. And then I redid the code for this new screen. Well, sometimes I really don't wanna do that. Really, this is where the benefit of creating a folder called shared and putting everything in a shared widget so that it can access, you know, all of those various screens can access the same UI elements. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a screen and I'm actually going to name it, if you wanna know where this naming comes from, in the widgets catalog under material components, there's this thing that says just app structure and navigation. If you look, that's where the app bar is, that's where the bottom navigation bar is, that's where the drawer is, you know, that's where a lot of the various uh, reused widgets are. So I'm just going to call this app structure. So let me go over to shared new file app structure dot dart. And while I'm at it, I might as well make a new folder called or a new file called shared dot dart. And then here export export app structure uh, dart. Oh, I didn't, uh, I did not save this as dart. There's two T's. Let's try that again. There we go. All right, so now it's gonna import package flutter material dot dart. And here is where I can take a lot of the widgets that were in uh, my home and my new and I can just bring them out. If you're ever curious where you have a named parameter like this floating action button and you hover over it, it'll tell you as a quick peek what it's taking. This is taking a widget. So if, and if I remember working with a widget, I can actually cut this out and bring this into something called a stateless widget. Stateless widgets, you're gonna be making over and over and over and over and over again and they're wonderful. And once you get used to working with them without, um, uh, without it feeling like you're, uh, you know, if, if everything is in a, a very large tree, you're gonna, your head, you're gonna have a headache. But if you put these in a, a good organization, it's gonna make things much better down the long run. And these stateless widgets always have an override of build. It takes something called context, which I'm not gonna go over. And then it always returns additional widgets in this fun, clean hierarchy format. So if I make this floating action button there, great. It's going to, as I mentioned, I'm on a new folder or, or a new file. It wants me to import a new package. This is gonna be screens.dart. And then this final part here, I want this to be floating action button and it, I'm going to bring it in from shared.dart so I don't have to mess with this again. If I hit save, this should still work, and it does, that's good. And what I can do back in this home screen is the same thing. I'm gonna take this all out and just say floating action button and have it import shared.dart, the one time I bother with this, and now officially the floating action button is in its own shared class. So if I made changes to, here, I'll put this one on the new screen and this is on the original. If I made changes to this floating action button and I like, for example, change this back to, I don't know, AC unit, you'll see the icon change for both the new screen and for the home screen. That's the point of doing all this. So you don't have to make those changes for all of them. It just looks, um, I mean, it, uh, it's a consistent layout all the way across your app. That is the benefit of shared. Make sense? Okay. Let's do that with something a little more complex, app bar. First off, it's a preferred side was size widget instead of a widget. So if I try to just do stateless widget, that won't work. Uh, the second is that this screen is different from this one in terms of the text that's there. This says AI health and the other one says new screen. So I wanna keep both of those things in mind as I'm working. So I'm gonna cut this out and I'm 
going to go to my shared folder. Oops, I'm sorry, my app structure. I'm going to make a new thing called app. Oops, app R. Uh, we'll just say uh, app R shared. We can just do that. And it's going to return an app bar. And if I hit save here and I do app bar shared, that's going to work for here. And if I go back over to new and I do the same thing, app bar shared, now it's going to say AI health rather than new screen. Hmm. One way to get around this is if you start passing in a parameter of what you want this to show. So in app bar, on the home screen, I want this to say AI health. And on the other one, I want it to say new screen. Well, this part is what it's returning. This part is what it takes. I'm going to have it accept a string and here you go, hit S, hit save, and that should work for both. I click new, oops. Uh, let's see if there's an error here. Nope, okay, so I just had to do a, uh, a hot restart instead of hot reload, where you just have the app restart its state, and now it's going to work. Okay, one more big thing about this app bar, and then we're gonna move on to the various lists. And in Dart, um, I wanted this so that we could have this all in a, a single shared file. Um, if you ever see this bracket, those are how they manage arrays or they're called lists in Dart. And uh, if you see this bracket notation, it's gonna take a list of type widgets what that means is on, uh, let me just show you the app bar so you can see this in a little better time. An action, an action, an action. Each of these is going to be its own widget. And if you look at the way that they are setting this up, where's my list of actions? Each one is its own icon button. So there's one, there's one, and the bracket is what denotes the top all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to make an icon button and it's going to give me an error. It says I need something in here. If I hot fix, it needs an icon and it needs an on pressed. So we'll start with the icon and then we'll add the requirement on pressed. And here I'm going to call this icon of icons. Let's keep with the AC unit for now. There's your AC unit right at the top. And that's on the new screen and that's also on the home screen because I'm making the change to both. If I get rid of this comma, oops, not that one. This comma. And I decide that I want to make three AC units. You should see it update over here and you should see it update over here. Okay, cool. Now let's change what these icons actually look like. And this one, let's do uh, developer mode. Sure, there's a bunch of people on here. So we're gonna make some people. And I want something so that I can get back to home. So if I keep tapping over and over and over and over and over again, I need to be able to get back without having to push back over and over and over again. Okay. so. Next up, I want to find a good way to do navigator.pop. And here I would suggest going back up or as per usual, go to flutter.dev. It gives you a lot of the answers for what you need when you're trying to get the, the question that you have. So I'm going to go to their cookbook because I know that they already had some stuff here. And I'm going to go to navigation and navigate with named routes. So the benefit of doing this thing where it just opens a new class every time I push the button, that's cool. 
um, but there is another thing that I need to, if I define a named route in my material app widget or in my material app, I can now navigate all the way back to something whenever you push that button, okay? So I'm gonna set an initial route and then I'm gonna set a named one for home and that's it, that's all I'm gonna mess with. So if I go to main.dart and instead of home screen, you can't have a home. You have to have an initial route. And I'm gonna make that this and then I'm gonna name, I'm really just gonna name one route today, which will be the forward slash. And what it will take here is context and then whatever. So it takes context, a build context, and then it returns whatever screen name you need. So it's gonna take context and it's gonna return, uh, this is gonna be home screen. And hit save. And I have to, because I'm making some big changes to uh, um, my route, I'm gonna have to do a hot restart on both and it should still work. Okay, good. So my app is now working again. And the point of all of this is so that on here, whenever I press home, what I wanna be able to do is I need to navigate back to this screen. And so what I would say is, uh, There's this really cool function called navigator.pop until. And what that does is it will take my context. Here's the challenge. I don't have context in my shared in this part. So I'm gonna have to import. It's gonna have to pass the context over. And then once it's doing that, it's gonna want a with name of port slash. Okay, so uh, what this means, at least in uh, the high level overview is no matter how many screens I have, whenever I push this button, it's gonna go all the way back until it finds the home screen. And to do this, I have to pass forward this thing called contacts that I'm just gonna call this as magic. It's not worth me going over and explaining, at least not right now. I'm going to do that here and pass the context over here. This is something that's passed throughout the app as you are creating it. And usually it's best managed by um, the widgets, a stateless widget. Um, I wouldn't suggest passing context to and from for many things, but in this example, just for this one button, it works. So I open it, I push all the buttons, and then if I click this, it's going to go all the way back to the home screen. Okay, I know this is a lot, and if this is your first time ever seeing Flutter, you know, I'm happy to go as whatever speed you want, but since this is also being recorded, I'd like it just to keep going through so that you can look these things up as we go, and, you know, if, if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them um, as best I can. Okay, so that was Navigator Push and Pop. I'm going to finish one last thing of a drawer because I think that's gonna be really, really simple. And then after that, we are essentially completely done with the, um, the app bar, the stuff that's gonna be shared across the various widgets. And I'll talk about back into the user interface. Um, here in home, very quickly, if I wanted to make a drawer, I, I can just make a drawer. There it is. Here's your drawer. Push the button and you'll see it and it's only in the home screen. Cool. That's it. We're done. Uh, just kidding. If you look a little further into these, uh, into the drawer, um, it will, if, where's that? Here we are. Drawer. What this takes often is a list view. A list view is this really nice uh, widget that allows you to scroll up and down and we'll take a bunch of widgets as children. So if I say in this drawer, a child is gonna be list view, and that's it. And I click here, and I click here. 
as I start scrolling up and down, you can see in Android, it's going to interpret what, what is there. And then inside this part, the list view, I'm going to hit my quick. It wants some ch child takes, child is one widget, children is multiple widgets or a list of widgets. So this is going to take a list of widgets and I'm just going to do some basic text widgets and copy them down. And there they are. That's it. Now you have a navigation drawer and it, when you're swiping on an iPhone, it, it'll have that responsive change. And if you're doing this on a Android phone, it'll have the material design responsive change. Minimal effort. You just said, hey, this is what I want. And there it is right in front of you. Okay. All right, I think we've done enough for the navigator and for drawers and at least introducing what a list view is. I'm going to go over some very basics about rows and columns. The AMIA thing, I went into more, uh, the other course that I gave, I went into more depth for here. Uh, but really what I want us to do here is I'm gonna make this, and I'm gonna make this, and if uh, time permits, we'll actually hook this up to a cloud backend. And I, you needed at least some aspect of knowing how to work with all the various things here in Flutter so that you can actually start to build the interfaces that you want. Uh, and so I will talk about some of these things for rows and columns and then we'll build from there. Okay. All right, let's go back in home. Get rid of this just so I can see a little better. I'm gonna put this in a shared folder. Because home is a, once again getting a little difficult to work with. Hit save. Okay. And now I'm back to where we had started. So if inside this blue container, instead of a text, I want something called a row. Row takes, same as with the list views, a widget of children. And I'm going to do a text and let's make three of them or four of them. And there they are. It says text over and over and over again. Okay, that's not very useful. Uh, let's make this more useful. Let's take this main axis, which is for a row horizontal and let's make it so that they're all spaced. And let's space them evenly apart. That's a little better. As you're working with a row, you can switch this back over to a column quickly and it'll make changes. And, you know, essentially you can, what you can even do is you could put, as an example, a row within a, or a column within a row. Uh, let's see. Children and put this in here. And what you'll see is I've got these, I've got these, and I have these. All right, that's a lot of blue. Why is it all blue and how do you make this a little better? If I went back to this dev tools and I clicked on each of the various parts, so column, gosh, that's really hard to read. Let's make it gray. I click on column, it tells me where it starts and how far it goes. If I click on row, it tells me where it starts and how far it goes. And the row is taking up all the available space. That's what it does by default. Column does the same. If I wanted this column just to take a little less space where only take the space that it needs, it's called main axis size and it just takes the minimum right there. And I hit save, and there it is. Oops. Get rid of this widget. So now you've got text in this part. I'm going to do this similarly for my row. I don't want to take up all that space. So main axis size, main axis size dot minimum. And now it's going to be very small. Okay. You can do some other um, cool things with this. So you can actually. If I wanted this, this text and this text to be at the very top, I could do something called cross axis alignment. 
and I can make it be, you know, the start for a row is this way, and is going to be down at the bottom, and there's other things that you can do. Uh, but for now, I think this is going to be helpful. And why I'm doing all of this in the first place, by the way, is so that I'm trying to build this, where if you look, um, when it actually has text in there, it's got white blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, platelets. This is a complete blood count. This is the way that we actually see the screen. So I'm building out the means to create this so that we can actually build further. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and set this text to hemoglobin, hematocrit, and then platelets. Hit save, and you see that. All right, um, as I had mentioned before, it's sometimes a little bit easier if you have a color within your container so that you can figure out how much space it's taking without having to go into this widget tree every single time you're doing this. I'm gonna do that here. Uh, and if you notice, the more and more and more that I'm doing in this space, it's once again, I'm in home screen and it's getting a little bit harder to manage. So I think at this point, it's time for me to take all of this container out and create a brand new file. And I'm gonna call this labs.dark. As with the other parts, import material design package or material package, do a stateless widget. I'm gonna call this lab. Uh, lab this is a cbc and we'll just do that and hit save and then over here there it is and i need to also create this under shared i want this to be under export lab.dart. Okay. All right. So now that we're in this shared folder uh, called labs, I can make whatever various changes I want. And my intent is to have one of these for a CBC and the other one for a basic metabolic panel. And so now I've, I've just taken it out. Now I can make whatever changes I want and then I can copy that over. So in here, what I actually want to do is, if you notice this text, this text, and this text, I want to wrap each of those in a container. And rather than do that, and then, you know, just so I can make this color be one thing and the other one be another, I'll show you in, as an example. Wrap this white uh, WBC as a container, and I want this to be color colors dot blue. of this and I think I have to do a restart let's see if that works yeah okay uh, if I had the gray you should still be able to see it with gray good okay so I want this to be blue and maybe these to be red and I don't know we can just make this like orange or gray or something else well I don't want to do this on every single one of them let's be a little smarter about it so if I take this whole container part so the container the color and the text. And I just bring this out into something called a private variable or a private, you know, if you're doing a private variable or private method or private class, it always has an underscore. That's all you have to do so that none of the other uh, files will be able to access it, but only here I can do that. And I'm going to call this lab text and it's going to take a string and it's going to return this container. If I did that here, underscore lab text and bring in WBC, it should still work. And now I can do this here, hemoglobin. And hematocrit, those should be blue. Oh, it didn't actually update my 
text. So I need to pass this text over. Hit save. There's hemoglobin hematocrit. And then the final one for platelets. Okay. These should all be blue. Great. It's all blue. How do I get this to change whatever color I want? Well, as with me passing a string in, I can also pass in a color. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this where there's an optional. So if I pass in a color in this uh, section, it will use the color. And if it doesn't pass color, then it's going to just default to red. So if, for example, if I do that, everything is all going to be red. But if I decide here, I want this one to be blue, and I want this one to be gray, there it is. And as, as I'm working on this, if I decide I wanted to get rid of all the colors, now it's just one line of code that I have to shift. That's much easier while you're creating whatever various layouts you want. Okay? With me so far, maybe, hopefully. Question. All right. Last thing here. So I've essentially, so you have the overall, I'm, this part is going to be where the WBC or white blood cells are. This part is going to be a column of hemoglobin and then a line and then hematocrit. And this part is going to be where the platelets are. Okay. And I'm going to draw this based on how much available space you see in these containers. I'm going to use that to my advantage so that it's going to be a responsive um, layout. You know, if I just type this hemoglobin the whole thing will shift and it'll be responsive as I'm making this. And essentially that's why I'm trying to do this. HP. So let's start with this part because I think that's going to be uh, the fastest to implement. And what I'm going to do is implement something called a divider. Divider is great because what you can do in the divider is you can set a color. I want this to be black and you can set a width I'm sorry, uh, thickness, thickness, and I can make it pretty large. Problem is, as is, because I've been working with all of these um, um, rows and columns, is it has a divider. If I clicked here, it's got it, but it doesn't know how wide to make it because it's too far down this tree. And just for now, except as is, the only way I'm able to get around this is I have to wrap this with something called intrinsic width. I would not suggest using these parts in your layouts frequently because they're expensive, but they can essentially, it says this column, how wide is this column going to be? I don't know. And so it checks whatever, uh, it checks the width of the widgets that are below them. And then it says, okay, column, you're going to be this width. Okay, so that's an expensive call to do frequently, but it is, at least on occasion, it gives you a nice responsive layout. Okay, all right. Uh, if you notice also that this part and this part, they're all, there's no space between any of the text. This is another thing that is helpful with a container, is it has things called padding and margin. If you do any development for web or for Android or iOS, um, you can actually make good use of this. Uh, and I'm just going to apply some padding and then I'm going to turn the color off so you can actually see it. Padding is on the inside of this container. Margins would be on the outside. Uh, let me just make sure. Yeah, so margins would be on this outside. And if I had this off, everything is going to squish back together. So I'm just going to keep this padding. Hit save. You've got a little bit of space here, here, here. You know, actually, while we're at And um, we'll build from there. Is this, yes, go ahead. Okay, man, so the padding, the, the measurement is 8.0? Yeah, 8.0. And so what you can actually do for this part, um, and I'll, I'll show this uh, in a little bit more detail as well, so that instead of just all, 
you can make them so left to right, or you can make them only. So if you only want padding on the right and you don't want anything else, or if you want them to be symmetric so that the top one, the vertical ones are the same and the horizontal ones are the same, you can do that as well. Um, this is really, really helpful as you are trying to set up whatever variations you need. Okay? Okay. Um, other questions? I know I'm covering a lot, but I wanted to at least give you guys a, um, well, as best as I can, I wanted to give you a layout that you can harness that also will be attached to the cloud. Uh, and so we've already, we've started by this as a part of a row. So here's one, here's one, there's one. This part is done. We don't have to do anything else with this. Here and here, what, what we need to do is we need to be able to just draw two quick lines. That's all it takes, it just takes a V. And to do that, I had mentioned that um, Flutter allows you to draw um, essentially whatever you want on a canvas. I'm gonna show you how to draw on this blue and just make it its own thing. And so I, for the lab text, this is already done. I want something different if it has a V in it. So I'm gonna actually copy this and call this lab text with V. Hit save. And I'm going to, for the platelets, switch this over. And for the white blood cells, I'm gonna switch this over. And if you look, you know, there's, I kind of need some more space on the top and the bottom anyways, at least in terms of this padding. So to answer for your question earlier, that uh, let's do symmetric. And for the top parts, vertical, let's make it, I don't know, 48. And then for horizontal, we'll make it, we'll keep it at eight for now. What that should do is, here you go. So now this is gonna be a little bit easier for me to draw whatever V that I need. Yeah, and it also adjusts to uh, whatever size I have. Okay, so this is leading into the final part of 102 called custom painter and then table. And the only difference, just so that you have a high level overview, custom painter, I'm gonna implement once for this, and I'm gonna have it decide, is this on the left or is this on the right? And that's going to essentially draw this, this, and this. And then the final part is gonna be a table, and I'll put a table in here, and that's it. That'll be the, um, that'll be the majority of uh, creating a background for the, or uh, creating the layout for which you can put all the various text you need. Um, for, since we're back into a high level overview for the people who have never seen this image in their entire life and said, why are you spending all of this time just drawing some these and, uh, fish bones, uh, in medicine, if you write, uh, the various labs from a basic metabolic panel like this, any physician will be able, or, you know, for the most part, any physician will be able to take one look at it and immediately interpret what data is there. Is this useful? Is this helpful? What is this lab today? This is a really helpful visualization because if you think about what we often see in medicine, it's a giant, you know, 12 by 200 table that just has a timestamp and then each of these going down in its own row. And it's, I would argue, mostly useless. It is not a good way to display your data. I'm just trying to give you guys a nice open source means to display this data that clinicians would absolutely use. Okay? All right. So we've made this lab text. We have this bottom part. Now we need to implement this thing called lab text with V. And what I have to use over here is something called custom painter. I want to at least show you where this comes from in Dart, I'm sorry, in, um, in Flutter. And if you look from widgets, it has a nice video where it tells you how to do custom paint. And it's take something called a painter and you have to make this as your own class and then you put whatever you want it to draw on. 
that's the short version. The more depth you go into as to how to actually make this painter class, um, I think this, uh, at least right now, Flutter's website is a little bit more complex. There is actually a really good, and I have this linked over both on GitHub and on these slides, there's a really good, from the basics forward, how to do custom shapes, including like circles and lines and all these other things. And I'm essentially building from what they've defined, okay? So every time we're having this, this is called a custom paint widget. And then whatever thing that I want this to be called, and then the stuff that's under it. So I'm essentially placing a widget in between here uh, so that I can draw it. And I'm going to do this one under, um, actually, well, why don't we just wrap this with a widget and we're going to call this custom paint and it's going to take this uh, and I had had this with a container before and I'm not 100% sure why, but I believe it had failed if I didn't do that. So bear with me on this part. Uh, painter is going to take a class and I'm just going to call this, I don't know, I'm keeping this class underscore paint a B. And this is going to you look at here, extend something called custom painter. Custom painter, and there it is. And it's telling me, no, I don't like what you're doing. And if I um, put this here, uh, it, I actually have to, um, oh, I'm sorry, I don't need this. It's going to give me uh, an error because I need these two overrides for this custom painter class. So essentially there's, uh, and you'll see this over here, there's this question, the at override, this is what you're painting, and then this is when you need to redraw, so for animation and for things along those lines. Um, I don't need this should repaint, at least not the way this is. The answer is false. But here on this paint, this is essentially where I'm going to draw all of this stuff, okay? Heading down just a little bit. And uh, no matter where you look, there's always this thing where you create, um, uh, you essentially call a final paint, set whatever color or width or things that you want for here. And then after that is where you do whatever you're drawing that you want. So this part and whatever colors and depth are not gonna really change. So I'm just going to do final paint equals, and it's gonna instantiate that paint. And I'm going to do paint dot color, and I like colors dot black. And I'm going to set the, um, stroke width to, four, since this is also a width of four. And now we're up to the point where we actually paint. Uh, and this painter needs to be called under paint a B. So here is this last part. You can do like draw circle or draw line or things like this. So I'm gonna call canvas dot draw line and it's gonna have to take two things and then it will uh, implement this paint as well. So it essentially takes three things in it. And if you hover over here, it's something called an offset. And an offset, just to give you the really short version, is here is zero, this is whatever your height is, this is whatever your width is, and this is your width comma height. It's essentially just an XY coordinate. So offset, zero comma zero, is going to start at this top left and then offset. And I'm gonna do size dot width. So that's gonna go all the way over. And if I did size dot height, 
should just draw a line all the way down. Ah, this is why. You don't see the line because my uh, container below it is overriding your color. That's why. So if I hit save, there's your line. Cool. All right, now I want to make this half that height. There we go. Now I want to take this and let's just call this the top line on top. Let's make another one and let's make this the line on bottom. And what I want to do is I want this to start at zero comma height. So zero comma size dot height. And I want it to end in the exact same space as the other one. Okay. Now you have a V, at least half of it. And if I get rid of my color here, and I get rid of this color, it's starting to get there. Now this last part, and in the same way that I had an optional parameter that it could take, I'm gonna make an optional parameter and I'm gonna have it say, is this on the left? So it's essentially a Boolean, true or false on left. And so I'm going to do here within this Boolean on left, and I'm gonna have it default to false because I use this stuff on the right side far more often. Because if you look here, this is on the right, this is on the right. And so I want to actually have to name it, otherwise it's just gonna be those. Okay, so it has that named parameter. And in the WBC one, it's going to now pass an additional parameter called true. Okay, and so let me get my, uh, let me bring the colors back on just so that you can see this a little bit more. So if you look, if I, I decide I want this to be a little bit, a little extra space on this side, I want there to be a little extra space on the other side, I can actually uh, make those changes to the padding. We can do that, or we could just draw the line. Either way, I think is fine. Um, so now that you see this color, I'm going to have this say, if on left, oh, I'm not sure if I pass that over. No, I haven't yet. So we'll start with the easier part. So within lab text with V, um, if I made this change to uh, the edge insets here, I could actually um, um, add, let's, let's see if I, let me rephrase. If I made this margin a little larger and I add a little bit of padding and we'll just say only, and for this, uh, I'm looking over here, I wanna add a little extra padding on the right see what that does. Yeah. So it adds extra padding here and it keeps the whole thing drawn. Um, let's make this a little bit smaller just so it's easier to work with. Here is where you have, you know, you can do an if else statement. And if you want to do that, that's still in the line of code while you're writing the code to make it more concise. You can just do open parameters is left, I'm sorry, on left, on left. And if that's the case, then it will have this. And if that's not the case, then it will go to the opposite side. So essentially, I think you saw the platelets move over. I'm gonna use this same idea here. But to do that, I have to pass down the, it, I'm sorry, the on left Boolean. And this isn't quite, isn't used to accepting here. So actually, sorry, um, you have to create a Boolean called on left. And then when you make paint AV,
and I'm going to do this as a named parameter. And the reason why I'm doing that is just so it's a little bit easier for me to read. These uh, br uh, brackets that you have right here are what allow it to be named essentially on left. That's what you're doing within all of these widgets. Whenever you see me pass in a parameter that's named, it's essentially what it looks like on the other end. Okay, so now I have in this whether or not it's on the left. And so what I can do here is if it is, question mark, it's gonna draw here. Otherwise, it'll draw it the opposite way. And so I want it to start over here. So offset of zero and size dot width. You should see it update. Oh, I'm sorry, size dot. This is going to have to be at zero and the width is going to be size dot width. That should bring it over here. Okay. And then I want it to end at zero. And there it's drawn. Same part over here. I'm going to do a bool for on left question mark. It'll draw this, otherwise, it will draw onto the opposite side. So I want this one to start all the way over. So that's going to be size.width and size.height. And then I want it to end at zero. If I hit save, looks like it's updated on this one, and now it's updated on that one. So now if I get rid of my color, there you are. You have a CVC. And the cool thing about this is if I make this and I actually type it out, it'll adjust. It is fully responsive to whatever size is in front of you for this text. That is, um, I think that's pretty cool. I think that's fun. Um, questions, yes. I'm commanding the paint color. Mm -hmm. Can you input the command by hex code? You can. Okay. You, you absolutely, the question, so for those that are uh, remote is if, can you, update the paint color by hex code rather than have to do colors dot something. Yeah, and the other things you can do with this is, I didn't show, uh, but I guess I can, for this paint color, where's this at? If I wanted it to be like a, like a little bit gray, I could make it with the variations, or I could do like green, and I can make it like a dark green, which is like 800, or I can make it like a dark blue, or the lower numbers, which is like 200, would be like a light blue. So you can make a lot of variations based on that. It doesn't have to just be what is there in, um, by default. Yeah. I'm always designing with hex codes. So. Yeah. No, you can you can definitely use hex codes. Zero, 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 like <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> just, just a few. Words. Yeah. No, I I, I want to write that down whenever yeah. I'm doing this. Um, other questions, at least right now. I think it's time to uh, actually, you know what, let's make use of what we have. Let me close all these screens that I have open and I'm going to go to new and just so that you have this open in this new screen, I'm going to, I'm going to make this whole thing great. And inside of here, what I want to do is I just want to have a CBC. And this is called, let's see, what did I call it? Lab CBC. Here it is. Uh, let me see if I get rid of, it looks like my, um, <laughs> within, maybe that's because of my container. Uh, but it, the, yeah, so it's actually expanding the whole thing out to make use of whatever various size we have. Uh, but here we go you can see uh, all of the, you know, there's a lot of ways, you know, I've done nothing in this screen, but since I've done all the work over here, you can, you can see the work 
in a different location. Um, and I think that's um, certainly pretty helpful. Uh, with that in mind, what I'm going to do is we're going to finish by creating the um, this part, which the amount of code, we've already done most of the code that we need. And then the last thing that we're going to do is connect it to the cloud. And I think that's going to be all the time I have right now. So this is something called a table. If you went over and you watched the videos and this should be kind of like a, a routine in Flutter. You can search for something called table or you can actually click on it and find it. They have a video on Flutter tables on this table class. Uh, they also have one called data table for those of you that are gonna be working with data. That's worth your time. And it tells you what all the various properties are and the methods and then it tells you examples of how to implement it. Um, I'm just gonna show you how, when you're in the code, how you can peek into a table. So on this new, or on this original screen, I'm actually gonna get rid of uh, lab CBC, and I'm gonna call it lab BMP, basic metabolic panel. And I'm gonna take this lab and all this work that I did for a CBC, I'm gonna redo for a BMP. Okay, so it should just show up as if it is there. Okay, I don't see any build errors. Good. I'm going to get rid of everything that is a row and this part. And hit save. And you should just see the platelets. Okay, so this works great. Um, and I'm gonna make this, I'll just call it like glucose. That is reuse code that we use to just make this. All right, so that part's done. This last thing is gonna be called a table. And then just to make this easier, I'm going to comment out uh, that lab text with me because we know that we can create that very quickly. And instead, I'm just going to implement something called table. Inside a table, if you hover over, it will tell you all the various things that you can take. So I, of note for us right now, we need something called order. And the other thing that we need is the children that are of type. It's a list of table rows. Okay. I don't know what table rows are yet, but we're going to have to implement them. Let's get rid of the border first. Let's start with that. So children is going to be a list of type table row. And if I hover over this, now it looks like that's going to take a list of type widget. And those are the children. Again, if you hold Windows or as hold command and click, it'll peek and tell you what that actually is. And if you click, it'll tell you a lot of how to implement this just within the code. Um, but I'm going to take this and this is a list of widgets. So if I hover over here, it's widgets. Let's make a text. And there's a text. Let's make three of them. There it is. Okay, that's done. Let's make another table row. And you know what? I'll just copy all of that and save it. All right, now we've already, we've made this. Okay, um, there's a few things of note. It looks like everything is on the left and that's interesting. And the other thing of note is I don't have any borders yet. So um, I guess we can start with putting these things, uh, I guess we can start with the borders. So we'll do borders and again, hover over with your mouse. It takes something called table border. And if you look at it, there is something called symmetric. All right, let's see what that does. Within here, you have inside and then you have outside and it takes something called border side. So let's make inside border side. Let's hover over this. It has color, style, and width. That looks pretty helpful. 
Let's do colors.black. And let's do width, um, we'll do 4.0. There it is. Okay. So we just made all of that only by peeking to see what other parameters um, each of the various uh, classes would take. That's all I did. Um, now let's get to this text and see if we can center it. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is implement the part on the far right, okay? So to center this text, um, you know what, while I'm actually, while I'm at it, this lab text, I'm, go I'm gonna wanna actually see what color each of these things are. So just for now, I'm gonna put this under here just so I'll have, be able to wrap it in the container and see whatever colors are in that spot. Um, so while we're doing this, we'll just call this lab text. And let me hit save and see that one of them works. Yep, one of them worked. There's that. Now all the top ones are there. And then this part, I'm gonna just copy over. Okay, so the bottom ones are there too. And it's implemented the same padding as I had for the other text widget. And I think that's also gonna be pretty helpful. Okay, so in here, um, what I can do is, if you, if you look at, let me refresh this tree. I'm in select widget mode, and I'm just gonna click over here. Oh. Let's see if it works. Okay, there it is. It tells me exactly where that is within the container. If you look at that text, it's all, the text widget is taking all the space at once, but it's just aligned over on the left. It's all left justified. And there's a few ways that I could get around this. One way would be I could actually um, wrap this, where's this, uh, this text widget in uh, a center, and that probably would put everything in the center. Yeah, right there. That's your fastest way. Another way that you could do this is, I mentioned that you could do text additional properties within uh, a text widget. So this is how we set the style and the size. Another way that you can do that is within that text widget, I could just say center it. Or if I wanted it to be at, at the end, I wanted everything to be on the right, I could do that just as easily. Um, so there's a few ways that you can get around that, but that is here. Uh, and then the last bits, I don't know if you all know offhand, uh, all of the various um, things that are involved within a basic metabolic panel, but I've had to write these things in so long that I can just do this with my eyes closed while being recorded. Okay, there's a basic metabolic panel. Um, nice for the clinical people that are watching this either here or post back. Uh, the larger numbers are always on top. The positives are here, the negatives are here, the renal stuff, and then it ends with the glucose. That's another quick way to remember this. Um, all right, so the final part is in this container, I have a table. And what I want there to be is there's this table here and then you have the platelet part. And so it actually would make sense if I wrap this whole thing in a row, the table in a row. And then just after that, I put the platelets. So I'm going to do that. And if I do this, this is another uh, interesting part it, within Sorry, let me get all of my stuff from table. Cut that out because it doesn't take child, it takes children. If I press save here, it all gets squished. And that's even if I do some of the various uh, whatever um, changes. Here's another widget that is helpful when you are trying to figure out uh, um, how best to lay out your um, the objects. It's called expanded. And that will take up whatever available space you have in just the available space. And that can work uh, in a row and that can also work in um, 
uh, column and it can work in other things. You can, if you put too many expandeds together, you will break your app. So be careful about that, just like you are with intrinsic height and intrinsic width. But in its part where you want this to take all the available space, it's really helpful. Okay. And the other benefit of me doing this is after table row, I can, uh, what was it it's called? Lab text with B, lab text with B, and just call this glucose and hit save. Oh, I'm sorry. That's inside the table. Uh, where's my row? Here it is. Hit save, and there it is. Okay. It seems like I need some extra padding on the outside. I'm going to show you one final way that you can do this. Quick fix, wrap with padding, and just hit save. And if you look, that doesn't work on this screen, so they're not fully lined up, but on that screen, it is on this screen, it is as well. So there you have it. We've created a CBC, we've created a chemistry panel, and we have text at least for both. Uh, what I'm going to do here back in my home screen is inside this widget, I'm just going to say wrap with column. Yep, thank you. And here I'm going to call a lab CBC. Okay, there it is. I think I'm going to want to main axis alignment, set this to where they're spaced evenly. And now you have a complete met or a basic metabolic panel and a CBC altogether. Is this useful, at least for the people here? Okay.